Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today, continuing on with the 31 days of Fabooween, and we're also uh, not only continuing with the uh, Disney Channel original movies, all the spooky Halloween ones, but also Halloween Town. And today we're going to be talking about Halloween Town 3, Halloween Town High, which I had actually never seen this one before. I, prior to this, had only ever seen the first two. And I mean, <laughs> you know, this one was okay. It was there, but you you could tell, at least in my opinion, that they were starting to run out of steam and they were starting to run out of ideas and it kind of started to drift away a little bit from what they were doing and then the, the next one it kind of went back into it but you know you didn't need four halloween town movies just saying but it's okay you know is this one that i would ever watch again probably not i'll stick with the first two um that's just how i feel but before we jump into this uh if anyone wants to help contribute to the channel by sending in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. And no amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series, a, a cartoon, a comic book, a video game, music, random thoughts, rants, streams, commentaries, and anything in between. That's what the paid request is set up for. So again, if any of you are interested, go ahead, <clears throat> send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. Uh, for those of you that have sent them in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel, and you want to see me try some different things. It does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos so it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you want to see me cover here on the channel. I keep making them. And at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy, just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So thank you. But Halloween Town High. So like I said, I think this is where the excuse me, the series started to lose a little bit of steam because they tried to do something a little bit different. Now, I don't know... Well, I'm sure that the budgets had something to do with it because the first Halloween Town cost $4 million and every single penny was on the screen. I'm sure the second Halloween Town probably cost around the same or maybe a little bit less, and that was all on the screen. But here, um, I'm sure the budgets... You know, Disney was like, hey, you know, like these... These movies are starting to kind of wear off a little bit. You know, we don't we don't want to invest as much into these. But you could tell that between the second movie and this movie, something changed. Now, again, I'm sure that the budget had stuff to do with it because, yeah, this movie has some of the elements of the first two films, but it was really scaled back. Or, you know, maybe they were trying their hand in something different and, it didn't really work, so that's why the next movie, they kind of went back to it. I don't know. But you could, like I said, you could tell the difference between the second movie and the third movie, where things started to change. So the plot of the film is, uh, it's one year after the previous movie, but I like this came out, I want to say in like 03 or 04, my phone is over there charging, but it doesn't really matter. But I think it takes place a year after... The previous movie, and Marnie, of course, still played by Kimberly Brown, she has this idea where she wants to kind of merge the two worlds a little bit, and she wants some of the kids from Halloween Town to come to the real world to experience what it's like, and go to high school and, and all that kind of stuff. So the Halloween Town Council agrees to it, but there are... Uh, there is a particular force on the council that wants to prevent her from accomplishing this. And, of course, you find out that one of the kids is his son. It's actually the dude from High School Musical. 
and he want they want to ruin what's going on. But of course, you know, like with all these type of movies, uh, the good guys prevail in the end and go from there. So, I mean, that's the plot in a nutshell. Like I said, it, it's missing. It's missing in that pizzazz. It's missing what made the first two movies the first two movies. You know, I get that they were trying to do something a little bit different with the story. And you still have, like, the character designs and the creatures and stuff. That's saved more for the ending of the movie and the beginning, a little bit in the middle. But I don't know if, again, it was a money thing and they just wanted to put the money towards that. But, you know, the point of Halloween Town is to see more of that. Not a bunch of kids walking around going to high school. Occasionally, they'll use their powers or occasionally they'll show their true form, and I was just kind of bored, to be honest, you know, it's like, okay, if I wanted to watch people in high school, there's a million other movies and TV shows that feature that as its center point, you know, that I can watch, like Boy Meets World, you know, if we're talking Disney here, um, you know, it is what it is, but I just, I was kind of like bored by that, you know, I wanted to see more of maybe Halloween Town. And then the second movie, or the, the fourth movie, excuse me. The fourth movie, I guess, understood that people didn't want to see that. So the whole movie takes place there. And I think it kind of works a little bit better in that in that film. But it's just like, you know, that's what people want to see as far as I'm concerned. And that's the biggest complaint that I have with the film. Um, you know, you didn't get to see what the title said. You didn't get to see much of Halloween Town, and then when the creatures came to this world, you didn't really get to see much of them doing their own thing, in, unless it was like the one part when they're in the mall and the bullies are picking on them, so they kind of show their powers, and then the ending of the film, in the beginning, of course, when they come in, and oh, this is the troll, this is this, this is that, but that's all just exposition stuff, you know, and then... I mean, I like what they did with Debbie Reynolds. I like how they put her as, like, a teacher. But she was trying to teach, like, the magic stuff. And there were some good little bits of comedy in there. It was nice, of course, to see her in that. And this is basically the last one she was in. Because she's in the next one, but it's a cameo. So, I guess either she was doing something else, or that's just how it was, or whatever. But this is really the last Halloween town that she was in. You know, so it is what it is, but... You know, everyone else does fine. You know, Judith Hogue is in it. You know, she has a, a little bit more to do. Uh, Kimberly Brown does fine. Um, the brother, Joey Zimmerman, does fine. Sophie had one line. She was in one scene. Um, I could tell why either she didn't want to come back for the fourth one or they wrote her off completely because she's not in the fourth one. And I'm like, okay, well... Was it that way by design, or were there disagreements, or, you know, there has to be a story behind that. Why she's only in one scene in the film and has one line of dialogue. The new people do fine. There's, it's no big deal. Like I said, the kid from High School Musical is in there. I think this was before High School Musical, so, you know, Disney obviously built him up a little bit. And put him in a bunch of projects because he's in the next one. And then he basically becomes the love interest, which is kind of weird because in this movie, there's a different boyfriend. And then in the next one, there's another boyfriend. And it's just like, okay, uh, Marnie ain't got no luck with the men, I guess. <laughs> oh, well. The effects are not bad. You know, there is some practical effects. There is some CG You know, this was the, the two, early to mid-2000s, so they were definitely... Sorry about the drink mid sentence. I was my mouth was dry. They were definitely gearing more towards the CG stuff at this time, and then the next one has a bunch. So and there you go. But there is some, you know, some practical effects in there, which is nice. But at the end of the day, like I said, there were there. You could definitely tell there was a dip in something between this movie and the next movie. I don't know whether. I'm, again, I'm sure it was a budgetary thing. I'm sure that Disney was trying to move towards other things. But um, I'm sure there was 
you know, issues behind the scenes and stuff like that. But you could definitely tell that something happened between part two and part three. And then I guess they listened because in the next one, they kind of jumped more into, I, I would assume, what people would want to see. But, you know, it was kind of, again, at this point, in my opinion, it was kind of running its course. And, you know, how many of these can you actually do? You know, just like any other franchise out there. But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of Halloween Town High. Next up, we will review the last one, which is called Return to Halloween Town. So until then, as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care, and we will talk at you later. See you.